Okay, welcome to the last in the series on photosynthesis and respiration. This video is going to be about the electron transport chain in respiration. Uh, it's the final step in aerobic respiration. Remember, aerobic means with oxygen. Remember to follow along uh, on a sheet if you have paper, if you have one with you. So last lesson we looked at, or last video, we looked at the Krebs cycle. This time we're going to look at the electron transport chain. Make sure you've got some paper um, so you can draw along. Remember, all of this is taking place inside of a mitochondria. So I'm just going to draw the outer membrane of the mitochondria around here like this. And then remember it has a folded inner membrane. Now I'm not going to exaggerate the folds much. Um, in fact, I'm going to put in some proteins. So uh, let's do that as well. Here's one protein that's going to be part of our electron transport chain. Here's another. And another. And another. And around here we've got a very special molecule which we've seen before, which I'm just going to include. Bit of a tricky one to draw, but I'll just simplify it a bit for you. This is going to be our ATP synthase. And we've come across that before when we were talking about um, photosynthesis and the reactions of the electron um, transport chain in the light dependent reactions. Now, of course, these are both phospholipid bilayers, so I'm going to show them as a bilayer. Remember, the phospholipids arrange themselves with the hydrophobic fatty acid tails on the inside and the hydrophilic phosphate heads on the outside. And this inner membrane as well is also a double, is also a phospholipid bilayer. So I'm doing my two layers of phospholipids here between all of the proteins. Like so. Okay, so I'm ready to now to uh, start to explain the mechanism that drives the electron transport chain. It's effectively just a chain of proteins in the membrane but those proteins enable a lot of ATP to be produced. You may remember uh, that the Krebs cycle took place in this area here. This is the matrix, which is like the cytosol of the mitochondria. Outside of the matrix, between the two membranes, we have the intermembrane space. Remember, inter means between two different things. I'll just zoom in a bit so you can read these. So we've got the matrix, the intermembrane space, and then outside we have the cytosol of the cell. Remember, this mitochondria is inside a much, much bigger cell. So we've just come from the reactions of the Krebs cycle. I'm just going to write from Krebs cycle. which took place in the matrix. There we go. We've got uh, two different high energy electron carriers that come from the Krebs cycle to the electron transport chain. They are NADH and a rather obscure one, FADH2. You don't need to know a lot about these, apart from the fact that they are carrying high energy electrons. Now they're about to give those electrons up. Their electrons go into this protein here. I'm just doing an E minus to show the electrons. And at the same time, they give up hydrogen ions, which are protons. and return to the state that they were in before they were carrying the high energy electrons, NAD plus and FAD plus. These are now going to go back to the Krebs cycle 
to get some more high energy electrons. So, we have a few hydrogens produced and these high energy electrons. And just like in the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis, these high energy electrons are going to bounce, this is an arrow in case we can't see it clearly, down the electron transport chain. And as they do so, as these electrons are bouncing along, they're losing energy. And that energy is used to pump hydrogen ions across the membrane into the intermembrane space. So all these hydrogen ions being pumped in like this. Great. This causes a massive buildup of H plus ions inside the intermembrane space. Lots and lots of them are going to build up. This actually lowers the pH in there because it makes it acidic as there are so many different hydrogen ions present. Which leads us to the role of this molecule here. This molecule is called ATP synthase. We've come across ATP synthase before. Oops. We've come across ATP synthase before in the light, in de light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. And just like in that one, this high concentration of H plus ions is going to flow out through the ATP synthase by facilitated diffusion. Remember, they can't cross the phospholipid bilayer because they're charged. This causes the ATP synthase to spin around like a windmill. And the spinning causes ADP and inorganic phosphate, PI, to be converted into ATP. Now this is great because it produces a lot of ATP. Depending on conditions, it will produce between 32 and 34 molecules of ATP. 32 to 34, that's really, really good. Okay, so this is the electron transport chain, makes 32 to 34. Remember, we've also got, from Krebs cycle, two molecules of ATP. And we got from glycolysis, two molecules of ATP as well. That gives us a total of 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. Notice this is much higher than the amount of ATP produced in anaerobic respiration, which was only two. Hang on a second. Aerobic respiration needs oxygen. So far, we haven't mentioned oxygen at all. Well, oxygen plays the final crucial step. Oxygen molecules are going to act as the final electron acceptor. You see, the electrons have built up here, and they need, to be, they need to go somewhere if this system is to keep going to make room for the other electrons. So the electrons are transferred to oxygen. At the same time, the oxygen also picks up a hydrogen, well, two hydrogen ions that have come through the membrane. Hang on, let me zoom in again. It also picks up hydrogen ions. So let's do our arrow coming like this, like so. This is going to make water, H2O. Oxygen acted as the final electron acceptor. It picked up the electrons that were in here, plus the hydrogen ions to make water. Now notice this doesn't balance. Don't worry too much about that. Really, it's half an oxygen molecule for each water molecule. The critical thing that you need to remember is that six oxygen molecules are going to be used for every glucose, and six water molecules are going to be produced. These six water molecules 
can now leave the mitochondria. It's kind of strange to think you actually make water, just not enough to keep you alive. So these can now leave the mitochondria, crossing the membranes, and out it goes. And remember this oxygen originally came in because uh, it can cross the membrane so small and uh, non-polar and it can, uh, it can come in and the oxygen which you breathed in is ultimately going to be converted into water. So important things to take away from this. First of all, remember that a lot more ATP, 36 to 38 molecules of ATP, are produced when oxygen is present. However, this whole system will stop if oxygen isn't present because there will be nothing to pick up these electrons. If there's nothing to pick up the electrons, no electrons can move down the chain, no hydrogen will be pumped into the intermembrane space, and so no ATP will be formed by the ATP synthase spinning around with hydrogen ions moving through it. That's a high level concept. If you understand why this system stops when oxygen is not present, uh, that's really an A level um, concept for biology. Uh, other things to remember, that there's six molecules of oxygen used and six molecules of water produced. That's very important. Remember how the ATP synthase works with the hydrogens flowing through it. It spins around making ATP, making a lot of ATP. And remember this happens in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The electron transport chain is the final step of aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, remember, is all about releasing energy in the form of ATP, a form that the cell can use. Okay, uh, this was the last of the videos of the series. Well done if you made, them made it through all of them. Have a good day.